but we're gonna talk today about face portraits. I mean, we've been talking about them, but besides just having the nice pictures, you know, what can you, uh, what kind of things can you learn from uh, um, studying the face portrait of a, of a dynamical system? And uh, Monday we're going to start talking about uh, some control theory, um, and um, again, I don't expect anybody has uh, any prior experience with that, so uh, we'll we'll go kind of slowly. But uh, let's see. I have one handout today, which is basically the first few pages. Oh, I should mention it. First few pages on this uh, link, Scholar PD article. So I, I didn't print the whole thing, but pr pretty much that's all you need. Um, and by the way, I have some old handouts I prepared. I made lots of copies, so I guess I won't do this again. Uh, you know, you can find them here, right? Um, but just in case you need some extra before I send them to the... Yeah, we don't want somebody homework as a handout. Uh, but anyway, so after class you can pick up some of this. Let's see, I have another handout that's a colloquium talk that we're having tomorrow. Um, if you're interested in some more kind of a models or applied uh, math, that would be a good, uh, good place to see. Um, so anyway, let me come back to the Scholarpedia article. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more, thank you, uh, in more detail uh, in a second. But I just want to show you a system of two equations, a dynamical system, continuous dynamical system consisting of two, uh, two state variables, right? Um, that is kind of a famous model called Fitzhugh-Naguma model. Uh, and it's connected with uh, the physiology of neurons. So uh, it's a kind of a very concrete application of the study of these dynamical systems and what, what you can uh, learn from uh, sort of the face portrait for that system, right? I mean, that system looks like just any other system, right? You have a rate of change of V that depends on V and W and a rate of change of W that depends on V and W, right? You also see an I here, which, which for now, just think about it as being zero, okay? So that's... Or think about it as a parameter, okay? So you, you assign a value, right? Now, um, so I'll come back to that. But uh, what are the variables? So, so the uh, V variable is, is a voltage across membrane. So it's, I don't want to go into all the details of, um, you know, the ion channels, but... Um, um, th there's there's literature on that, but just think about it as some sort of voltage. So um, it has some rest rest value. I think it's like minus 80 um, is the rest value, and then it goes up from there. Um, and W is call a recovery variable, which again. It has to do with some sort of the ions, ion, ion channels, um, potassium or calcium, some sort of um, chemical that that allows for for these channels to open or close. And um, for us, so again, just think about for us as just a dynamical system of two equations. Okay, and. Um, it has an analog analogy with uh, electrical circuit that you know has the, that uh, kind of diagram. All right. So, and of course, you can go to p-plane and just plot, you know, put this in and get the face portrait, right? For it. And actually, it's 
I invite you to do that. Um, this is something you're going to get. And again, it's a little bit busy here, but uh, what you will see are the null clients. So think about that's the system, right? <clears throat> and, and f was a function that is a cubic function. Okay? It was v minus v cubed. It's a cubic function. So, so how do you get the null clients of that system? You set each right hand side equal to zero one at a time, right? So when you set the first one equal to zero, you get w equals f of v. So it's a, it's a it's a it's a cubic it's a cubic function. W as a function of v. So it's it's this function, right? What's the w null client? So basically, where the second right the right hand side of the of the w prime equation uh, equal to zero. Well, it's just linear, right? So so that's. That's this one, right? Okay, so so what happens when the two null clients intersect? Hmm? Equilibrium, right? So so you know when you have a cubic function and a straight line, how many intersections can you get? One, two, or three, right? But in that picture, so depending on what the parameters are, you may get one, two, or three. Okay, but if this picture shows just one. Okay, so it's it's right here, and you could, in principle, compute it right by setting by setting both equal to zero, right, and solving that that linear that uh, system. It's a nonlinear system, and the the result is not a pretty number for the simple fact. Well, maybe I should say if if i is zero and v is whatever it is, let me go up here. So if you look at this, you try to set it equal to zero, you, what you'll notice is it won't be easy to solve by hand. Almost impossible, because you, you're going to have to solve a cubic equation. right? You're going to replace. From the second equation, you find w in terms of v, right? And it's linear in terms of w in terms of v is linear. You plug it in the first equation. You're really going to get a cubic equation in v. And you have to solve that, and you, by hand, it's horrible, right? I mean, there's no cubic root. There are lots of cubic roots there. So, um, but whatever, it's going to be an equilibrium, right? Okay. Then, what's the next thing that you do once you find the equilibrium? Stability, exactly. So. So let me um, let's just do it while we're at it. So, so I'm going to have v is remember what was it? V minus v cubed minus w plus i, and this one is. W is whether W prime is. Zero point zero Hold on, let me let me. Can I can I get that? No, can I get this? Thank you. Oh, somebody gave it to me, but uh, let's see. So I want to call this uh, epsilon v minus uh, plus. Um, I don't know, gamma. So let me use my notation for that. Just, just, just the variables, okay? Um, so um, plus delta. I'll write this down in a second. So let me let me do this. Alpha times v plus beta um, minus excuse me plus beta times 
W minus delta. Okay, when L, when epsilon is is 0 0.08. Yep. Uh, what's um, my alpha? One. Beta minus 0.8 and delta is 0.7. Yeah, thank you. So it's minus. Let's let's put all positive. So I'm going to put plus delta. Okay. So alpha beta delta. Okay. So I'm going to write this so you can recall this. So it's called the Fichina Gumo. Model has dv dt equals v minus v cubed over 3 minus w <coughs> plus i and dw dt equals epsilon alpha v plus beta w plus delta okay and let me let me emphasize that this for now, just think about it as, you know, there or not there. I mean, for now, it's zero, so we don't have anything of that, okay? So we have that, and coming back to this, uh, let's proceed. Thank you. It gave me the error, so I'm not running, so. All right, so that's what it is, and I don't. I want to do it like some somehow symmetric, so I can see. So negative two to two, I believe, is going to capture. Okay, so let's do the. Let's see the um, the null clients. Okay, there's null clients, right? So you see the where the equilibrium is is. Some number, right? Which you can find. You can by solving by asking the computer to solve it. Uh, or you can just try to isolate, right? So there's minus 0.1 or so, okay? All right, so that's, that's uh, okay. And then the Jacobian is this, so when you linearize, right? Remember, this, the actual value, I mean, the actual equilibrium is not easy to write by hand, right? In fact, so... To take then the right, the left hand, I mean the right hand sides, differentiate with respect to v and w, and then evaluate at that equilibrium. When you don't have the equilibrium explicitly, right? It's like impossible to do it by hand. So you have to, you know, do it some some sort with the computer. You can do it symbolically. At this stage, you can. I mean, those are simple enough that you can ask the computer to solve it, and it will ex solve it symbolically, right? But if that was v to the power fifth, then even symbolically you might, you might not have gotten any, any solution, right? Anyway, so that's the Jacobian, and these are the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are negative. So what does it say about, about this system, about this equilibrium? Stable. So you can see that by, well, this doesn't really show. Well, it shows it's stable, but but you see it has this excursion, excursion, and I shouldn't have started with this, but anyway, now I made the mistake. But you see if I start close to it, it kind of goes to it, right? So it, it, it confirms this table, okay? But there's something peculiar about this system, and what is that? Notice that if you are... Uh, so what can you learn from this phase portrait? It, besides the fact that you can see the linearization, okay? So the linearization is is, is basically something that shouldn't excite anybody because remember when you have a linear system, especially like this, right? With these numbers, it can be, you know, uh,
one of those four or five situations, right? You can have the eigenvalues to be distinct, real distinct, or it can be repeated, in which case you have two possibilities for that um, e exponential, e to the ta, right? Or uh, is there a complex conjugate? In this case, they, they look like they're complex conjugate, right? And the imaginary part is not very small, so, so they're not repeated, right? They're really they're truly complex conjugate. So this means that this is going to be spiraling in the origin, right? But quite fast, so, so that's why you don't see, I mean, you don't see, you don't really see the spiraling in, right? But notice that there's no straight line. There's no, there's no line that goes straight in there, meaning that there's no real eigenvector, right? That is, there's no real eigenvalue. I mean, if you have a real matrix and you have a real eigenvalue, you'll be able to find a real eigenvector. That is, an eigenvector with real numbers, right? Whereas, since you don't have real eigenvalues, there won't be a real eigenvector, okay? So there's, there won't be any kind of direction in this plane that things just move in a straight line, okay? But again, this, this picture is like a, how do you say, horse glasses? I, it's, like, it's like a very limited view of, of the face portrait, right? Because it's really only approximating the dynamical system in the neighborhood of that equilibrium. Uh, what do you call it, the horse? Blinders. blinders, okay. What did I say? Glasses? Okay. That's my translation from Romania, sorry. <laughs> um, so, right? So, so, so it tells you a nature of that equilibrium, but it doesn't tell you what's a way, what's, what's really happening with the system, right? And you see, you don't have another equilibrium so that you can patch these pictures, right, and, and get the idea. So, so this, is, this is a good thing to have, but it's very little. tells you about the whole system, okay? Um, so, so the point is that you can learn many other things from the whole face portrait. And the one thing that you learn about this system is the following from this face portrait. Notice, did you see when I, when I first, maybe I should exaggerate this a little bit so you can see it. Um, let me raise all solutions. And I'm going to plot this. Um, uh, it's kind of tough. Minus uh, 1, 2. 1.5, let's see if it's, yeah, now it should look a little bit better. Okay, so notice what happens with the, with the direction field, with the vector field, right? It's almost horizontal, right? Most of the time, like, it's, most, it's almost horizontal. Does anybody know why? Well, what's the, the fact that it's horizontal, it means what? It means the the change in W is much smaller than the change in V, right? So you can see it here. Because of this epsilon, when I when you when you take a value for V and W and you plot that vector, this this value, which is the length in the horizontal direction, is much bigger than this value, right? So it's gonna be more towards horizontal direction, right? If, because this epsilon is small. If this epsilon were big, like not 0 0.08, but 1, you'd have exactly the same null clients, right? Same equilibrium. Why? Because when you set this equal to 0, it doesn't matter what epsilon is, right? But, but look at the arrows, right? So, so here, the picture looks quite different, right? 
I mean, behavior is the same, and you can see the spiraling in, right? More clearly than before. Okay. So the fact that so that's one thing that that you learn from the system is that it has that kind of peculiar uh, feature with this parameter. So. So this model, just just a you know a lesson here is, this model with different set of parameters is not a good model for what we're you know we're studying. It has to be a certain range of parameters, right? It has to, epsilon has to be small so that this model replicates what you see in the in the nature. Okay. Okay. So. Um, okay. So that's one thing that it's very so. Because it's kind of almost horizontal, what happens when you are up here? Well, it kind of stays horizontal, so it kind of goes horizontal until what happens? It is the, the V null line. What's the V null line? What's the meaning of the V null line? What happens on the V null line? The derivative of V is equal to zero. means the direction is vertical. So you see it goes horizontal and then it must hit because it's a cubic, right? And then it must be uh, vertical and then you see it kind of stays very close to that null line. It kind of embraces, right? Hugs the null line just stays with it, okay? So that's what happens if you are there and if you are close to this, but not so close, but kind of below this elbow here, same thing happens, okay? You're shooting horizontally and at some point you hear this and then it kind of so it hugs this piece of the null line and of course it, right but what's the 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 point here if you're if you're just if you're like in a in a very tiny region here uh you can actually have you know go all the way to this null line so make this large excursion or not, okay? And uh, here's what I, I want to show you is, is what, how this V and W look as a function of T for a place where it's, there's this large excursion. It has this picture. So V is the blue and red is the W, w right? And again, the, the initial value of time zero were this and this, right? That's where I clicked, right? And you see what happens with the V. V actually makes this large excursion, right? And then it kind of comes back and then it, it, it recovers. So in the long term, what's going to happen with this? They're both going to go to the equilibrium, right? But there is this kind of initial thing that's happening, right? So. So this is what's called excitability. So, so there's a large excursion in the voltage uh, during this period. And then there is what's called a recovery. And then, uh, then they both kind of go, go back to zero. And you see the W variable is kind of peaks when this V variable is, is kind of recovering. So that's called a recovery variable. And that's the that's the the time when the neuron it cannot be excited. It's kind of refractory, so it has. Okay, but I didn't tell you really what the excitability is, um, except I'm not getting excited about this. Uh, so the role of I is actually the one that actually has um, the I, which, as I said, think about it as zero, right? Um, when you start varying i, when you control i, that's when you are creating this uh, spike. So let me let me show you back on the. It has like a. Here it is. Okay. So this one. Okay. So what do you see happening? This 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 hard, this cubic null line. Is actually shifting up, right? That's because you're changing i. I is remember it's added to the first equation. So if you if it's not zero but it's one, 
what's going to be the QB null client if i is 1? Well, it's going to be, I don't know, up or down, right? We're just going to translate up or down. The other one stays fixed, right? So you see, when you kind of, your initial condition starts here, but you, as you move i, as you change i with time, it kind of, your point goes below that, that, that knee, and then it shoots, and it makes that uh, large excursion. So you can see the, the spike here, right? Yeah. Um, like this, right? Why, why kind of? Well, it's it's just by the nature of the of the system that once it's once it's kind of it's vertical here, then it's going to be uh, again. This is moving, but um, if you kind of take a look closely at the system, and again, this is what what a face portrait would analyzing the face portrait would tell you is you see. Uh, let's look at this point, right? So once you're vertical and going going up, right, by the way, why, why are you going up and not down here? So why, what's the direction? The direction field is, um, is the right hand side of the second equation, right, tells you if you are going up or down, right? And if you look at the second equation, it's linear, right? in V and W. So you can look at the sign of that second equation of the second right hand side to tell whether you go up or down. Now remember that second equation is zero when you are on the on, on, on that null client, right? Which is a straight line. So below a null client you're gonna be one sign, above null client is gonna be another sign, right? You just have to figure out which sign it is. And I think if alpha beta or positive it's clear when you're below that, you're going to be negative. Uh, positive, because V is greater than what it would be on this. Okay, so you're positive because you go into infinite, right? Whereas here, it will be negative. So that's why when you hit this null climb, you're going to hit it with vertically, but going up. When you hit this null climb, because you're on this side of this whatever color it is, uh, no kind of you're going down, right? And after you pass it, you see how, how the direction actually forces you to stay close to it. It's like, you know, you have to follow that direction field. Um, okay, so that's... So notice as, as, as you... Uh, uh, um, Imagine like you have control on that parameter, and that's the stimulus. That's an external stimulus, I. So if you can control that, that's what you, what you actually uh, are, are creating, right? You're creating actually a non-autonomous system. Because if I depends on time, you have a non-autonomous system. Right? So if i is a function of time, everything else is independent of time, but if i is a function of time, your direction field is going to change, right? And so when you, when you try to fit that curve with the direction field, it's going to be a non-autonomous non system. Okay? So um, so what am I, you know, what am I saying here? I'm basically saying that uh, studying the face portrait as a whole can kind of tell you more than just looking near the equilibrium. Okay, C can tell you the behavior of certain solutions, and then you can kind of extrapolate that to um, to situations that are of interest. Now, um, I made another link here, which is. A link to some applets, which are just another way of. I hope it's going to work. So, by the way, this is not just about neurons, but also on the heart muscle. Um, cell dynamics is the one I was talking about. Fichinagumo. 
Um, it's again they use different names for these things, but the most important thing is this epsilon. See, it's a small. So this gating variable, this this recovery variable, is a very slow um, varying, and you see that kind of picture, right? Now, why do you see two? Why do you see a repeated one, repeated sequence? Huh? Because the the external the stimulus is in this case a periodic stimulus. If if there was just a one spike thing. Like a, one external stimulus, then it would just be flat after this, right? But the next stimulus comes, it would actually do the excursion, right? So think about this. Null cons are going, whenever there's an external stimulus, this, this cubic null con shifts up. You're doing right. Then the next uh, stimulus comes, shifts up, does it again, right? Before the stimulus comes, the solution stays close to that equilibrium, or actually stays at the equilibrium, right? But the moment the stimulus is moving that null client up, it, it allows for the, or it forces the excursion. Okay, and um, it's kind of um, hard to, to tell you what this 1D dynamic, 2D dynamic uh, looks like, except to say that, um, let me do 2D dynamics, that uh, if you think about um, this kind of model being prescribed at, at every point in a square. So imagine this is a piece of, of your heart, right? You cut it off and it's rectangular. Um, straighten it. All right. Then you're, you're saying, I'm going to actually um, apply a stimulus, a voltage, right? And see what happens uh, in space and time. So if I start here. Well, if the stimulus comes from uh, that side, and I think it just did it once, right? I can trace the voltage at this point. Restart. Where's my point? Um, okay, so I want to I want to show you. So I'm going to look. I'm going to monitor one of the variable or both variables at one point, and I forgot how to say which point I want. Maybe reset. Huh? Okay. Well, let me. Yeah. Okay. Trace off. Okay, so here's the point, right? So at this point, I want to. I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring how this value of v and w changes with time, right? And you see nothing happens. Well, they use u and v, but. Okay? And now I'm going to uh, send a stimulus. Ah. Where is the stimulus? Stop. Okay. Restart. Okay. Okay. You saw that when the stimulus came. You saw that, right? So, what do you think happens here? I mean, the stimulus comes, but it's actually the. It comes from the propagation of the of the electrical, you know, whatever charge that is that is that is in the actually in the medium, right? So it's not something that you force it. It just naturally comes because there's this wave moving. There's just, OK? I wish I could stop this, but OK. Um, and and uh, this is basically when your heart doesn't no longer do uh, what it's supposed to do. If there is if there is a, a situation where what did I do? So if, if at some point a region of your heart is damaged, right? Then the electrical 
pulse is no longer kind of propagating normally, and you can get this kind of behavior. And you see this in this behavior, what happens with, a, with the external stimulus? It periodically uh, uh, reaches this. This is, reaches this location, right? And it has some sort of a pattern. And you can kind of start seeing uh, the periodic I, right? At each location. And it's, it's, it's not, this is at this location, but at this location, it's the same, right? This location is the same. There's only one region here where something, anyway, but it's kind of, um, why is it bad to have that pattern in your, on your heart muscle? It's not neurons, it's, it's, a, it's a muscle. Okay, so. Well, right, I mean, this electrical, this, what you see here, when, when it's red, it means the, uh, the muscle actually contracts, okay? And actually, the muscle cells contract because they get excited by that stimulus. And um, if, it's, if it's like this, that's what, you, that's what the muscle, uh, heart muscle contraction is, is designed to do, right? So it pushes the, the blood out of, right? So it's some, some sort of a pattern. Whereas if it's, if it's like this, it's not, it's not going to have that power to pump uh, the blood out of your, you know, to contract. So it starts, it's called fibrillation here. But um, anyway, there's a kind of a nice, let's see where it is. Yeah, so you can see it here on the, on the, on the surface of the heart. It's, so if it were to be normal, what would happen is it would have to be, the waves would have to have some, some, some normal pattern, right? That they're propagating, and they're not coming back, right? Unless, you know, it's naturally. Whereas here, it's like um, the, the pattern started correctly, and then it had hit a region where the conductance wasn't done correctly. You know, maybe there's a damaged portion of the heart, and then this electrical stimulus actually gets a weird pattern so so the heart is no longer able to pump okay so that's where the model comes from but um, it's a nice uh, simulation here okay and of course this is a toy model here what you want if you want to think like this um, I mean the fact that it's cubic you know it wasn't designed I mean, your heart is not coded with that system in mind, you know. But that, that system mimics the behavior of a heart cell or of a neuron. Okay? So, I think that's all I wanted to say about this. Um, now, in your book, there is a different... Um, example, and that is the RLC circuit. By the way, this, this is a nice kind of topic for a project. If you're interested in, uh, you can let me know. But So, um, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let you kind of read through this, the derivation of the model, um, but just to say um, that kind of maybe the simplest um, let's see. There's an induct inductor here. There's an inductance. It's a simple circuit, and. Um, how do you represent a capacitor? Actually, I think it's, huh? I think this is a capacitor, right? And so the resistor is wrong. Oh, okay. So yeah, so it's a. There's a type on that figure, right? Like this. All right. Thank you. Um, and then there is current, and there and then there is. Um, so there are, there are assumptions, 
Uh, and let me just write the ones that are uh, Im important here. So there's a current across capacitor and that there's a relation between the voltage and the current. It's basically a linear relationship. Um, and the one where we're kind of departing from what you've seen in the ODE course um, is to think about the law, the resistance as being a nonlinear function of the current. So when you send a current through a, through a resistor, typically you would say that, or I, you know, idealized situation is that the voltage is proportional to the current. And that constant of proportionality is the resistance. Okay? But in real life, what happens? It's linear only on a very small portion. Like for a small current, yeah, the voltage is going to be linear with respect to current. But if the voltage is kind of larger, then, I don't know, chemistry physics comes into play and says it's not going to happen like this. It's going to be some nonlinear relationship. And um, don't ask me why we pick this one, but in other words, uh, this would be what? This would be IR squared plus 4 times IR. So you see the R is itself a function of the current. You can think about the R as being like this, right? Times the current. So, so yeah, if, if I is very small, yes, the resistance is 4, right? It's close to 4. But if, R is, if I gets larger, then the resistance gets a lot larger, right? Which is this physical? I guess I don't know. You, you can see it in a, I'm sure, in a lab, in a physics lab. Um, but the point is that these these two things, in addition to, I think there is also uh, the cap, the um, inductor, right? So inductance is the ratio between the voltage and the rate of change of the current. So these two, in in, in uh, conjunction with this leads to the following system and that's I um, x1 prime so I'm already using x is going to be what minus 4 x1 minus x1 cubed minus x2 and x2 prime is 3 x1 okay uh, what was x1? x1 is so these are the state variables. X1 is IL, or which is the current, right? And X2 is, is voltage across capacitor. OK, so that's, that's a system. And that's a nonlinear RLC, RLC circuit. And the nonlinearity comes from this X cubed, right? It's very similar to this feature in Agumo, but it's much simpler, actually. All right, so if you, um, if you pursue the, uh, so the face portrait, what are you going to see? And in fact, you can actually do it by hand. I'm not saying, I mean, I, I, it's, sometimes it's good to kind of do these simple examples by hand rather than always r jump, jump to the computer because, um, first of all, it's slower, so you can kind of uh, digest a little bit better these things, but also, you know, um, it's a good practice. So uh, I forgot the type of colors I used, but for the null clients, so the first, first portrait, the first thing is start with the null clients, right? Um, you set it, the first one equals zero, and so you get the x2 equals minus 4x1 minus x1 cubed, right? So what's this looking like? It's a cubic function, and what are the zeros? Well, there's only one zero, right? So this is is x1 minus x1, 4 minus plus x square, right? So if you set this equal to 0, well, 
plotting a cubic function. How do you do it? Set it equal to zero, right? Find the x-intercept, x-1-intercept. Uh, what's, the, what's the other thing? Well, it's an S-shape, right? So you'd have to find the places where the derivative equal to zero and so, and so forth. Um, and that's never, right? That's not zero. So, so it will be some sort of a, like this, right? It's an S-shape, but it, doesn't, it has only one intersect, right? So that's the, that's the x1 null line, and the x2 null line is going to be uh, when x1 is 0. So what is that? X, that's the x2 axis, right? So what's the equilibrium? Obviously, s0, 0, 0 is the only equilibrium, right? So null clines. Uh, equilibrium. What else? Stability, right? So what are the eigenvalues? So stability. So I'm going to put z only 0, 0. Stability of the equilibrium. So via the eigenvalue method. Yes. Done how? How do you do this stability? So remember x, f, the f of x, you write this, you know, um, x is x1, x2, and you just write the first component of the right hand side and the second component of the right hand side and then take the derivatives. So this was 3x1, this was minus x1 minus x, minus 4x1 minus x1 cubed minus x2. So what is the Jacobian matrix at some x? It's a 2 by 2 matrix, so it would be what? Minus 4 minus 3x1 squared. What do I put here? The derivative with respect to x2 of the first component, and then the derivative with respect to x1 of the second component, the derivative with x2 with respect to. Okay? So at the equilibrium, which I don't know, you can write like this, what is the matrix A? So maybe, maybe I won't call A yet. Matrix A is going to be what, what this Jacobian gets evaluated at this point. So it's minus 4 minus 1, 3, and 0. Okay? Again, think about that Fichin Agumo system. You wouldn't be able to do this by hand. Because you cannot write down the, the explicitly the, uh, the uh, equilibrium point because of all those parameters and the fact that you have a cubic. Here it was easy because well, zero zero. We came out. It turned out to be zero zero, right? And because you don't have that, then I mean, it's easier to find the Jacobian matrix, right? But it, but to evaluate it at a point where you don't know how to write it, right? So it all has to be done kind of uh, either symbolically or or you know numerically, but on the computer. And then what do we do? We look at the eigenvalues of A, right? And how do we find the eigenvalues? We set the term equal to zero. Of what? Of a minus lambda identity. Okay. And unfortunately, the book uses lambda identity minus a, which I didn't realize uh, until recently. But it doesn't matter, right? So what? It, what is this? This is minus four minus lambda, minus one three, zero minus lambda. That's a two by two determinant. So. I'm sure you had an opportunity to do these things, this computation, long, uh, many times, right? Too many times. So lambda squared plus 4 lambda plus 3 equals 0, if I'm right. And then lambda 1, 2 is 
Am I right? Okay. Plus or minus square root of? No. Thank you. Yeah, if you don't see the factorization, then you... Okay, so what's... Uh, yeah. So lambda 1 is negative 3, and lambda 2 is negative 1. I don't know, just an increasing order. You can... doesn't matter how you call them. And uh, what... So, so both have... Have, have negative real parts, right? I mean, they are real and they have they are negative. So, in Maga Madagascar movie, was that line that that they said uh, they got to the Grand Central Station and they said it's grand and it's central. So, anyway, so both. I don't know why I think of that. Uh, both eigenvalues are have negative real parts because they're real, they're real and they're both negative. So, um, okay. So this means zero zero is stable, right? And it's asymptotically stable. All right, so I'm going to have to edit this tape at least in two places today. Okay. Uh, one was the horse. <laughs> Glasses, right? Okay. So, um, all right, so anyway, so why? But that only gives you the, the, the not, not the whole picture, right? Of the, um, of, of the direction field, right? Of the face portrait. Um, there's one other thing that we learned maybe today, or maybe you've, uh, but we, we kind of emphasized today in that Fitchin Nagumo system it was what happens with the directions on the null clients. Well, right, on this null clients, so using two colors, you can actually determine. Uh, the direction of the vector of the of the um, of the, of the, um, of the vector field. So, for instance, on this at a point on this on this null line where f two is zero, it means it's horizontal, correct? So, is it left or right? Where do we look for that? You look at the first equation, whether it's positive or negative, right? Because that's the derivative of x1. So x1 is going to increase if the right-hand side is positive or not. So the question is, what is the sign of, of f1 on this piece? And you say it's negative. That's right. So it means what? It means, right, starting here, you're going in this direction, right? And of course, how a magnitude is going to be something like that, right? And similarly, you're going to go in this direction if you are here, right? So here, F2, F1 is positive, and F2 obviously was zero. But then the same thing happens here. On this point, you are, or on this point, F2 is positive or negative? Well, F2 was just x1, so obviously this is positive, right? So it means you are moving vertical but up, because x2 is going to increase when the solution reaches this point. Right? So it's going to go this. So there is something kind of c consistent with this. For instance, you would not, I don't know, could you have a vector field or an equation for which this thing goes, I guess you could. This thing goes to the right here, and then these things would go down. I guess you could, but in which case the, yeah, I guess you could. So, but anyway, this circulation is, makes some sense, right? 
to me at least. I don't know to you. Um, I mean, again, it's not. You have to check things on each portion of the null client. But and by the way, you can also say what happens in this whole region. In this whole region, f two is positive and f one is negative. Maybe. How do I decide that? Well, the sign of F1 is kind of changing as you cross this null kind of for F1, right? So you're positive somewhere and you're negative somewhere else. So, okay. It's a fun way to solve systems of inequalities. Isn't it? Um, and now, now think about this. So this is not a whole phase border because you don't know what's going to happen if you start like somewhere here. What's going to happen? Well, you kind of know, but you kind of know that it, because it's stable, you're going to go in, right? But in this case, you you know. But in the other case, you didn't know, right? It wasn't clear until you actually let the compute the solutions. You, will, you really don't know, but here it's kind of you get an idea of what. Okay, now um, let me just say one other thing is um, to solve the system and, and expect to have a solution explicitly is ridiculous, right? That is, to find x1 as a function of t and x2 as a function of t. Uh, when you have nonlinear systems, that's very rare that you can find explicit solutions of nonlinear system, differential equations. Okay? Uh, so the only thing you can do is you can. So uh, one can find. find the um, face portrait of the linearization or linearized linearized system around the equilibrium, which in this case is D zero zero um, by Well, either explicitly, so by using p plane, I mean, excuse me, this is the other way. It's either by using p plane or by explicitly uh, computing and plotting solutions of this x prime equals ax. This is the linearized system, right? Which in this case would be what was the matrix? Negative four, negative one, three, and zero. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so how do you solve a system like this? Well, we did it last time. We said the solution is e to t a x naught, right? So where x naught is the, well, is x at 0, if you want. So you would have to be able to compute a few, um, a few solutions of that system by picking different initial conditions, right? That's what we do when we actually click the thing in p-plane. Okay? But if you were to do it explicitly, then remember what it, from the last time it was? Uh, the exponential of a, of a matrix was computed very easy if the matrix A was decomposed into a product of 
the following metrics, a matrix U, a matrix J, and, and the inverse of U. And remember where J is blah, 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 right? So this is called a Jordan canonical form. OK? And somebody asked me why, uh, what is U? How do you compute U for, for this matrix? And the answer is MATLAB has that capability not only of computing the eigenvalues but also the eigenvectors. So, so if I put minus 4, minus 1, 3, and 0, so I define this matrix, then I can do the eigenvalue of the matrix. Okay, that saves you some time, but you can do this by hand too. But it can compute also the eigenvectors. So how do you, how do you get the eigenvectors? On paper, first of all, so you so you has um, eigenvectors. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, let me just mention this and then I'll come back. Eigenvectors vectors of A on its columns. So for instance, take the eigenvalue negative 3, then how do you compute the eigenvector? Well, what's an eigenvector? It's basically a vector that satisfies this and it's not 0. So. It's basically a minus negative 3 times identity times x equals 0. And that's, in essence, it ends up being subtracting off the diagonal. I'm hoping this is not news to. to any of you, but so what do you do now? You write Yeah, or just simply you write the the equations. You you so so far you've worked with like matrix equation, now you convert it back to a, a system and now because you you have an eigenvalue one of these equations is going to be linearly combination of the others, meaning you can you can forget about one of them, right? And so, in essence, you get a relation between x1 and x2, the components of this eigenvector. So, in this case, it's x1 plus x2 equals 0. So, it means you can pick 1 arbitrarily, right? So, x1 is negative x2, right? So, you can pick 1 arbitrarily, and then the, the other one is going to be determined by that. So it's going to be, say, negative 1 and 1 is an eigenvector, right? So that's one of the components, uh, one of the co columns of U. And in MATLAB, you can uh, find that out by the same function, I of, of the matrix A, but where you ask to uh, output two, func two, two matrices. Okay, it doesn't matter how you call them, but the first is always the, the, the U, so you better call it U. And the second one is a diagonal matrix having the eigenvalues on the diagonal. So, so you see the eigenvalues are no longer listed like before, but now they're put in a diagonal matrix for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, and the vectors, the, the columns correspond to the vector uh, eigenvectors. Now, why is that not negative 1 and 1? It's, it's a scalar multiple of that, right? So it's, it's still, it's in the same direction, right? Negative 1, 1. But I think it's normalized, so the length of the vector is 1. Um, and also, the, yes, the second one is the one we haven't computed, but it's clearly this one is negative 3 times that one. So on paper, it was, you can find easily 1 and negative 3, for instance. Okay? You can see the computation in the book. Uh, and then 
the last thing is to so for lambda one equal, uh, lambda two equals negative one. Same similar computation gives you x two is one and negative three. This is terrible, isn't it? Okay. So so this was x one, x two. So basically the matrix U is gonna be ah, tough, huh? Is this. So it's negative one, 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 negative three. Now remember we, we could have ended up with choosing different eigenvectors for the first eigenvalue and the second eigenvalue. So this matrix U is far from being unique. But you know, because you, you multiply U and any inverse, that kind of cancels. So in the end, J is unique. So matrix A is U, J, U inverse, where J is the Jordan form, so it's lambda 1, lambda 2 which in this case is what it is, right? So basically, what is e to the ta? x naught. So that's, that's what we need, right? We need x of t to be the general solution. So it's going to be e to the tj u inverse x naught. And it's what it is. It's basically negative 1, 1, 1, negative 3. What's the e to the tj? j was diagonal here. Well, it's just exponentiating the... Right? And then what is... Okay, we didn't compute the u inverse, but this thing is like a constant. Okay? Since, since I don't, didn't specify what x naught is, remember I want to pick different x naught so I can plot that direction, that 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 phase plot, right? Well, I can I can uh, pick them so that u inverse times that is 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 a, my choice of c1, c2. Okay. So if you do this matrix multiplication, you will see exactly that this is the same as. Uh, as this operation, so uh, I mean, look, I don't want to advertise for myself, but maybe I'll I'll do this. And this has been pumping all along, which is good. Um, but um, if you are really interested in in this explicit solutions of linear systems, um, you can check out this course in Spring 09. Um, and of course, now I'm, I'm going to have to log in here, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but the first few lectures really talk about what happens in not just 2 by 2 metrics, but 5 by 5 metrics, any number of n by n metrics, right? But again, rest assured that we're not going to be really dealing, I mean, we're not going to be doing, why would you look for explicit solutions for a four by four, for a linearization of a four by four system around an equilibrium? Except finding the eigenvalues and the sign of the eigenvalues tells you stability, right? Why else would you be interested in the exact solutions to the linearized system when the true system doesn't follow that, right? It follows the pattern, but it doesn't follow the exact solutions, right? So it's so this is kind of an academic exercise, review of linear algebra, and a nice application. But okay. Um, and again, I was asked if you if if one has to do this in the homework questions, which was due today. So kind of tough. Uh, but the answer is no. I I don't. I don't want you to do this by hand. Why? Oh, okay, because there's P plane. You can just see the face portrait of the linearized, right? Just click that thing, right? But also because the eigenvalues that you get there and the uh, the metrics that you get, I won't be 
nice. I mean, it would be some decimal numbers, right? So, do I want to see this with t times 0 0.0579 uh, dot dot dot? No. Okay. But the point is that this is this is what's behind. So if you, if you really want to impress me, just write this. You see, and that's that's a it's. I mean, again, you should really take my other course because there we talk about um, uh, 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 and again, I'm 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 just going to answer this really quick. If you look in this Van der Poel equation, which take a look at this, it's it's the same. It's the RLC circuit, right? Except the M is not positive; is neg. Uh, well, here is positive. In your example, was negative, right? But you see in this positive one, which we, which we saw before, right? You see there is zero, zero is again the only, uh, you can plot the direction, the, excuse me, the null clients. Okay, one is cubic, the other one is a straight line, right? Turns out that this one is in the middle is unstable, right? So it does look as if the linearization would explain you everything, right? By the way, the eigenvalues here are both uh, is repeated, right? So there is one direction in which there, it's kind of a there is an eigenvector, right? But there's an, there are no two directions, so there's only one, okay? But your question is, does this picture tell me how far is it gonna I have to go in the real system before I see something else? No. And you see, the behave the fact that there is a what's called a cycle, or you know, os basically that's an oscillator. If if your start, if your initial condition, whatever voltage, whatever current, happens to be not close to zero, but here or anywhere, actually, for that matter, right? Very soon, you're going to get into the oscillator oscillatory behavior, which it's hard to see. Uh, I mean, it's easier to see when you graph, right? When you graph versus T, both components. But what I'm saying is that because of the presence of that cycle, you know what happens if, right? But by just looking at the, the middle of the, of the equilibrium, there's no way to tell that, oh, somewhere out there, there is a cycle, right? Or maybe there are five other equilibrium. You know, so there's there's kind of a very uh, it's 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 a, there's a lot of things that are not known actually, even in the plane. Okay, which should be reassuring. Everything you do is 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 known. I mean, is is knowable. Is that a word? Yeah. <laughs> 